I'm working on uh, plant biotechnology. And uh, as you have uh, heard about a little bit um, on my activities and professional career on plant biotechnology. So I'm going to highlight uh, some uh, messages which have been developed um, uh, worldwide uh, by the scientists uh, working on plant science uh, globally. So the title of my present talk will be uh, or has been uh, given here, a role of agricultural biotechnology to tackle the impact of climate change on crop plants. Uh, since morning, uh, our learned and honorable present, uh, presenter, the first speaker, uh, uh, Professor, uh, has uh, explained and elaborated the impact of climate change and different uh, aspects of climate change very nicely. So uh, uh, I'll not uh, invest or more time on that, but uh, before uh, going to uh, uh, shed some light on the uh, role of biotechnology to tackle the uh, changes incurred by this climate change, uh, I, I want to share some uh, background like uh, plants, uh, the, uh, basically the agricultural related plants. So uh, you can say that uh, agriculture and climate change are internally uh, correlated with each other on various aspects as the main cause of biotic and abiotic stresses are the climate change and which has caused the adverse effect on agriculture of a particular region. And uh, this um, effect may be sometimes positive or negative, but the negative part is the most um, uh, uh, greatest part, which is which will um, be explained later. And uh, the land and its agriculture are being affected by climate change in different ways, uh, like variation in annual rainfall, average temperature, heat waves, modification, weeds, paste and microbes, uh, global change of atmospheric carbon dioxide, ozone or ozone level, and fluctuation in sea, sea level rise. The threat of varying global climate has greatly driven the attention of scientists as the, these variations are imparting negative impact on global crop production and comprising the food security worldwide. According to some predicted reports, uh, agriculture is considered the most endangered activity adversely affected by climate change. To date, food security and ecosystem resilience are the most concerning subject worldwide. Hence, uh, um, uh, UN um, SDG goal has uh, given the priority to ensure food security for the growing populations in the uh, world. And, cli and so climate smart agriculture is the only way to lower the negative impact of climate variation on crop adaptation before it might affect global crop production drastically. This slide is the climate uh, uh, scenario or, uh, which has been uh, explained pretty nicely uh, or by our first presenter, Professor Narini, and uh, I'm not going to explain more to make you bored. But uh, as plant is the major uh, part of the ecosystem, so uh, we, we can um, uh, say that because of anthropogenic activities or uh, rising population, uh, which is uh, shrinking or grabbing the lands uh, gradually and um, uh, causing environmental changes or climate changes, which is um, threatening the loss of biodiversity and major component is the plants. So uh, the climate change uh, is overall changes are, uh, are there for in every ca cases of life, uh, such as water, food, health, environment, and land. This is a dramatic scenario whose most obvious symptom would be the change in weather condition, more heat waves, storms and floods caused by melting glaciers. And uh, you can see in the, this in this picture, and then uh, it will cause flood, uh, thunderstorm, lightning, and um, many years, um, since uh, uh, recent years, every uh, uh, thunderstorm causes death in our country. Uh, because uh, we have seen uh, last uh, few weeks, uh, several deaths, uh, casualties occurred due to lightning in our country. 
and uh, you can uh, see the heat waves and um, uh, this flight i have uh, gathered from the um, uh, fao uh, website uh, here they have summarized the increasing number of uh, different um, uh, uh, natural calamities like drought flood uh, extreme temperature storm and total um, events in may you can see um, which is um, uh, changing and uh, that, that is um, uh, is a great matter of concern for us because it, they are the ma major player for uh, causing biodiversity loss and um, here is a uh, projection of uh, temperature rise which can uh, change um, uh, or cause a major detrimental effect to the biodiversity loss uh, i'm not going to uh, explain it more uh, here i i want to spend little time uh, since uh, biodiversity biodiversity is our concern uh, ecosystem uh, restoration will uh, save the biodiversity and loss of biodiversity is actually happening due to because uh, uh, major human population growth increasing consumption of this uh, growing population and reduced source of efficiency and uh, they are uh, actually uh, driving these primary drivers um, which are uh, largely uh, causing the biodiversity loss so uh, this loss of um, climate change uh, can um, directly indirectly uh, affect the uh, the agricultural production and socio economic uh, and finally uh, cause socio economic uh, impact uh, on on these following aspects and finally uh, we, we will be in vulnerable conditions so here from, uh, i can i i have, I have uh, collected one examples that you can see that uh, world population versus uh, food demand and uh, crop uh, production uh, and yield uh, this graph clearly explain uh, that um, this asiatic region they are uh, they are having more population and um, they have more demand of for cereal crops and uh, in 2008 per acre food per, uh, crop production uh, were able to uh, feed eight people now uh, the demand is increasing in great day by day because of our population growth is uh, com uh, comparatively higher than the other parts of the world especially temperate region so as a part of the uh, scientific community uh, what is our uh, role the scientist uh, from all over the world um, has come forward with their knowledge and uh, they have um, engaged with their uh, uh, scientific activities, research activities, and that has been summarized in this table. This table was uh, collected from PubMed. Uh, this is the, um, uh, one of the part of the National Center of Biotechnology Information maintained by National Library of Science US. Uh, so uh, you can see that um, uh, the abiotic stress and biotic stress related resources are, um, uh, and uh, we're giving more uh, emphasis and um, uh, biotic, uh, biotic stress were more emphasized than the biotic stress. And uh, uh, because, uh, because due to climate change, uh, we are facing uh, drought condition and sal more saline condition. And um, uh, gradually uh, we will have uh, more insect paste and microbes. So if we can uh, identify genes uh, from these plants which are uh, able to survive in drought condition and the plants which are able to uh, grow in saline condition or plants uh, which have uh, ability to um, resist infection caused by insect or um, viruses, fungi, bacteria, that will help us uh, to, to cultivate uh, rice, uh, grain crops, especially cereals, which um, uh, these Asiatic people are dependent of for their staple food. So you will be able to um, uh, generate, uh, develop or produce more food to feed the uh, growing population. And <coughs> moreover, uh, the Indian subcontinent in the Bangladesh region is the origin of center of origin of rice. And we had more than uh, 50,000 of uh, land races of rice, which 
we need to pay attention and they have a huge potentiality to tackle this type of uh, pro problems caused by um, climate change. Here I'm sharing one paper, some activity through genomics, proteomics and bioinformatics uh, activities. They have uh, tried to isolate uh, genes from uh, one rice variety called Pokali uh, and uh, here they have compared the, the, the research system with uh, IR64 that is not uh, saline tolerant, but um, Pokali is saline tolerant. Then they have, um, uh, this is one of the picture of the uh, manuscript published in Plant Cell Environment, uh, volume 41, page 947 to 969. This is a very uh, a good paper which explained the isolation and characterization of this early stress response and late stress response genes. And finally, they summarized the important genes which could be uh, manipulated further in other rice varieties uh, for growing in saline conditions. So uh, what could be the uh, contributions from uh, agricultural biotechnology to restore um, uh, ecosystem? Uh, these are the more uh, four uh, active uh, areas like uh, greenhouse gas reduction, crop product adaptation, protection and increase in yield with less surface and micropropagation techniques. Uh, the important one is I have mentioned less, but uh, it is the mother of all uh, above three uh, techniques. So uh, how greenhouse uh, gas reduction can be done? Uh, it is um, uh, uh, you can see that agricultural biotechnology offers a solution to decrease greenhouse gases, such as reduction of carbon dioxide emission by allowing farmers to use less and environmental friendly energy and fertilizers and practice soil carbon sequestration. Because, uh, you see that um, if you uh, have uh, plants which have uh, um, to, um, uh, capacity to uh, tolerate high manure or um, uh, high water, um, content and uh, this situation, uh, uh, you, you and uh, if, if you do not have to apply more pesticides, uh, then you can reduce um, carbon dioxide pollution, climate change pollution. Uh, in an esti estimation in 2011, uh, it, it was said that use of pesticide tolerant and insect resistant biotech crops helped a reduction of. 30 million kg of active ingredients worldwide and decrease the rate of herbicide and insecticide sprays and plowing redu reduced carbon dioxide emission by 23.1 billion kg of carbon dioxide or removing, it is comparable to removing uh, 10.2 million cars off the road. You can see the effect of agricultural biotechnology, how we can, we can help uh, to reduce the carbon dioxide gases. And crop adapt adaptation, uh, as, as it is highlighted that uh, the changed climatic condition is creating more uh, problem or it is threatening the growth and development of crop plants or other uh, plants growing in the nature. So if we can uh, produce the crops which could be growing in this changed climate, uh, that will be more beneficial. So agricultural biotechnology has given us the, uh, the opportunity. As, you, as you, I mentioned in the uh, couple of slides before that, uh, scientists in the world, uh, they have employed their knowledge to identify genes from different um, uh, plants or sources, which can tackle the uh, adverse condition like saline, salinity or drought or cold or a uh, 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 flash flood like this. So these uh, uh, characters can, uh, would be introduced in the um, uh, plants uh, which are uh, um, uh, essential for uh, our uh, food production or any other uh, part of the climate uh, ecosystem. So uh, genetic modification and hybridization, uh, these are the techniques uh, are being currently used in this case. And finally, uh, production and increase in yield with less surface, that is the utmost um, criteria because uh, uh, one scientist named Boyer, uh, he has reported that uh, climate change have reduced crop yield up to 70% since 1982. That's why 
uh, United Nations Sustainable Goal um, has projected us or demanded us to increase crop productivity up to 70%. So the major aim of agricultural biotechnology is to enhance the agricultural productivity and maximize the productive production capacity of our um, uh, crops within, within these diminishing resources. And uh, here is the uh, microprogression technique I'm explaining. Uh, more, most of you may have the idea of this because uh, this uh, developing or change, uh, transferring gene uh, from different sources is dependent on tissue culture process, which I have mentioned as genetic engineering. So once uh, this tissue culture process is also uh, developed based on the idea of 30 potency. That means any living cell has the potentiality to give rise a mature plant of its parental type. Given the situation, uh, if you have provided uh, a favorable condition with uh, PGRs and nutrient composition, the tissue can grow up as like as the seed uh, to, 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 to type its mother plant. So here, uh, this, uh, the different stages of microprogression has been um, uh, mentioned. And using this microprogression technique, uh, we are um, uh, uh, coupled with uh, gene transformation. Uh, we, we are now able to develop different types of gene, uh, GM crops. And uh, here is um, uh, in the couple, next couple of slides. I will share the experience of, or examples of some uh, different trade, uh, GM crops with different traits. Uh, you can see the salinity crop, uh, tolerant crops. Um, uh, many genes have been identified, um, uh, which are giving uh, the um, uh, capacity uh, to tackle this um, abiotic stresses like drought, cold, saline uh, condition or low, low phosphorus conditions and have been used for the development of GM crop. One example I am uh, mentioning here that Arivas, uh, OS, uh, means Oriza sativa DREB1 uh, gene ha, um, uh, is a transcription factor which has been uh, used to develop sugarcane, transgenic sugarcane, and it is under field trial since 2009 to 2015 and will be released soon. And uh, more than a thousand, uh, uh, more than a dozen of other uh, different uh, you know, genes have been used for the salt tolerance like PDS45 and uh, one of the genes which uh, have been developed by Professor Narendra Tuteja in ICGB, which have been used in our lab also uh, in different crops. And uh, uh, like this, many uh, plants, sugarcane, rice, barley, wheat, and tomato are being uh, under modifi modification with different target genes for uh, this abiotic stress tolerance. The drought resistance, drought is another uh, problem uh, which is uh, uh, developed by uh, climate change. So uh, we are focusing uh, to, to develop uh, world scientists, plant scientists are focused on developing transgenic plants wherein genes for water stress management. Uh, uh, there are different genes uh, for uh, categorized structural and uh, uh, regulatory genes. Uh, highlighted here in bold faces, you can uh, see, are being used to develop transgenic plants. And transgenic crops carrying different drought tolerant genes are being developed in rice, wheat, maize, sugarcane, tobacco, seeds, groundnut, tobacco, tomato, potato, papaya, etc. And uh, all these um, uh, lists um, are uh, available in this um, um, web link. I'll show it again um, in the last near last slide. And this type of plants are uh, uh, drought tolerant with insect protected varieties are uh, about to come to the, um, to the uh, market uh, in next later part of this decade. Then uh, another uh, aspect is to uh, tackle cold to tolerance, like frost is one of the uh, problem. So cold binding factor um, uh, and uh, DREB1 genes, these two transcription factor um, uh, together has been used to develop transgenic plants. And uh, in eucalypt, in the, one of the example is eucalyptus, which is under the under field trial, because you know these uh, genetically modified plants, 
before release they have uh, uh, to undergo several trials um, and several safety issues uh, etc so they uh, before release and um, one important uh, gene um, isolated from a plant uh, which is which uh, grown in the antarctica region uh, name is uh, this dyspasia antarctica uh, this gene has been isolated from this plant and used in arabido transformed in arabidopsis thaliana which is now capable capable of um, uh, tolerate frost condition up to minus 30 degree centigrade and uh, in 2012 a genetically modified drought tolerant maize uh, monsanto um, company has been developed so the event name has been given mon 87460 uh, which is capable of tolerate uh, cold condition which is expressing cold shock protein b uh, and now uh, approved for use in, in the uh, us market biotech crops th those are uh, capable of heat stress because high temperature um, uh, are is another uh, problem which can uh, destabilize uh, some proteins uh, so hsp uh, uh, um, different hsps those are heat shock protein are uh, capable of tackling those problem in crescentibum uh, 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 gm crescentibum which has been developed using drip one a gene from arabidopsis thaliana uh, uh, and other uh, up, yeah i'm about to finish uh, uh, hsp 70 uh, so these transgenic plants are now uh, very good and uh, last example is the btx plant this is a biotic stress tolerant plant and uh, you all know that this plant is now being under uh, cultivation in our country has been released um, uh, it is one of the first um, uh, food crop genetically modified food crop and uh, we are using this and philippines uh, has come forward and hopefully india will come forward soon to uh, release this bt plant because uh, cult during cultivation of bt plant uh, egg plant farmers are um, spraying more than 8 times uh, before harvesting uh, mature eggplant. So if you cultivate Bt eggplant, the spraying of insecticide will be reduced uh, near to zero. So there you can understand how uh, much uh, pollution will be reduced. But this is the website uh, which is having the uh, world GM crop uh, which have been approved till now. And uh, this is the uh, bar, uh, line graph showing the um, five major countries which are growing uh, biotech crops. And in conclusion, I, we can say that agricultural biotechnology is so powerful that virtually um, everyone from farmer to scientist can use it. It is enabling the industries to make new and uh, better products, often with greater speed and efficiency and flexibility. And acknowledgement, I have. Um, collected most of the uh, information from this review plant uh, paper and uh, other inter internet resources. And finally, thank you very much for your question sharing. And uh, I'm also delighted to be part of this webinar. Thank you again.